You're going to need a bigger boat. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 movies that were changed at the last minute. They've recast the role of Marty. They fired Melora, and they've hired you. For this list, we'll be going over the films that received significant alterations either during or after production. If there's a last-minute movie change you wish we'd included under the wire, please don't wait to comment below. Number 10. Less Shark, Jaws. Jaws was a hugely influential movie that almost looked very different. A big reason for that was its animatronic shark. Unfortunately, the mechanical animal barely worked. It was an ingenious new system, but each day something would break and have to be repaired. Since it was costly to shoot with, director Steven Spielberg decided to rework how he shot the film. He ultimately went for a less is more approach with the shark. <laughs> Thankfully, this turned out for the best. The largely unseen shark and the menacing music left more to the audience's imagination and made it more terrifying than a prop could ever be. And when we do see the shark, all the buildup just made it scarier. Number 9. A speedy redesign. Sonic the Hedgehog. The first Sonic the Hedgehog trailer ran into tons of backlash for the Blue Blur's live-action design. Uh, meow? <laughs> Apparently, the special effects team took inspiration from the Ted franchise to give Sonic more realistic eye placement and fur than his animated counterparts. Who are you? What are you? I'm a hedgehog. I feel like that's obvious. Although the studio believed they'd just get complaints from fans, a universal rejection of Sonic sent them scrambling. Director Jeff Fowler let everyone know on Twitter there would be a full redesign. Although the movie was supposed to come out in November 2019, its release was delayed for a few months to February 2020 to accommodate all the changes. Thanks to veteran Sonic designer Tyson Hess and a $5 million budget, Sonic got a much-needed and well-received makeover just in time. And now he's like full Sonic Daddy the way we knew him. How did and you you're calling him FSD? Full Sonic Daddy? Full Sonic Daddy. Okay, yeah, keep yeah. going. Number 8. A New Marty. Back to the Future. Marty McFly doesn't just vanish from his family photo in this time travel movie. His actor also disappeared, or rather, was recast. Whoa, this is heavy. There's that word again, heavy. Why are things so heavy in the future? Is there a problem with the Earth's gravitational pull? Although Michael J. Fox was the first choice for the role, he wasn't the first actor to play it. The filmmakers initially cast Eric Stoltz as Marty and shot over a month with the actor, but Stoltz took a more dramatic approach to the role that didn't fit the light tone of the film. He was eventually let go during the film shoot. He said, I'm so sure that Stoltz is going to be great that if he doesn't work out, you know, you put somebody else in the movie and start all over again. When Fox took over the part, his comedic timing and fantastic chemistry with the cast was evident in every frame of the movie. Uh, Doc. Huh? Uh, look me up when you get there. Indeed, I will. This recasting ensured Marty McFly would become an unforgettable sci-fi protagonist. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Doc. Uh, are you telling me that you built a time machine? Out of a DeLorean? Number 7. Diego was meant to die. Ice Age. Diego is a saber-toothed cat charged by his pack with leading Manny the Mammoth, Sid the Sloth, and their human baby into an ambush. Let's show that human what happens when he messes with sabers. Diego forms a friendship with the group and has a change of heart as the journey goes on. Boy, for a second there, I actually thought you were going to eat me. I don't eat junk food. While trying to make up for his actions, Diego is injured by his pack's leader and left behind by Manny and Sid. Hey, knock it off, Squirt. You gotta be strong. You have to take care of Manfred and Sid. Although the movie sees him return later, Diego was originally intended to have died here, but his demise left children upset in early test screenings, so the filmmakers decided to bring him back. The sequels would certainly look very different without one of the main cast members. Number 6. Aragorn Replaced – The Lord of the Rings Trilogy it's hard to imagine seeing any of the main Lord of the Rings cast played by different actors. 
But Aragorn, the grizzled heir to the throne of Gondor, wasn't always played by Viggo Mortensen. This is no mere ranger. He is Aragorn, son of Arathorn. You owe him your allegiance. Actor Stuart Townsend was cast as Aragorn first. He spent months in New Zealand undergoing training with the rest of the cast. But mere days before shooting was due to begin, Townsend was let go and replaced by Viggo Mortensen. Director Peter Jackson felt that Townsend was too young to portray the gravitas of the character. We had a hiccup in the casting process because another actor had been cast in the role of Aragorn, and we just came to a realization that we had cast the role a little too young. It caused us a lot of headaches. Mortensen didn't have much more notice either, having less than a day to decide on the role and then taking it because his son insisted on it. He goes in the woods with the small people. That guy becomes the king. I go, he does? A king? Really? He goes, yeah, you got to do that. You got to do that. I'm like, okay. And I'm glad I did, obviously. Although we're glad he did, we wonder what Townsend would have been like. Number five, Gun Beat Sword, Raiders of the Lost Ark. When Indiana Jones is accosted in Cairo, he's attacked by several henchmen who try to slay him and Marion. After they're separated, one with a particularly intimidating looking sword sizes him up and looks ready to duel. <laughs> Indy proceeds to take out his gun and shoots his enemy. While Harrison Ford is no stranger to shooting first, this moment was going to play out very differently. The initial idea was to have a complex duel that would have pitted Indy's whip against the fighter's sword, but Ford improvised the change after he came down with dysentery and didn't feel well enough to do something so elaborate. The sequence where Harrison is battling the black swordsman and pulls out the gun and shoots the swordsman was a compromise that I made on the day that Harrison wasn't feeling too well. Fortunately, it led to one of Indy's best scenes. Number four, the epilogue, The Shining. The Shining has one of the most iconic and mysterious endings in horror. The deranged Jack Torrance pursues his family through the maze of the Overlook Hotel, and they escape as he apparently freezes to death. But a cryptic vintage photo of him from years earlier at the hotel leaves us stunned and full of questions. Originally, the movie was shown with a scene at a hospital in which Jack's family is told that Jack's body was never found. But director Stanley Kubrick was unhappy with the scene and decided to have the scene removed. Surprisingly, he made this change after the movie was already circulating in theaters. We like to think film professionals said, here's Johnny, as they made this cut. Here's Johnny. Number three, the ending, I Am Legend. In this post-apocalyptic film, Dr. Robert Neville conducts experiments on the mutated vampiric monsters that many humans have become in the hopes of finding a cure. Okay, subject is female, likely 18 to 20 years of age. The version of the film released in theaters ends with Neville sacrificing himself to ensure his allies escape with the cure he devised. On September 9th, 2012, at approximately 8.49 p.m., he discovered that cure. But this movie could have had a more poignant conclusion. An alternate scene sees Neville realize the mutated humans care for each other, and he has become a monster to them. I'm sorry. He lets his last test subject go and decides to leave with his allies. Unfortunately, this morally ambiguous and complex ending wasn't received well by test audiences and was swapped out. Number two. Mike Myers as Shrek. Shrek. Although Shrek has become more of a meme in modern times, the original movie and character are seriously amazing. A big part of that success is Mike Myers' pitch-perfect performance as the grumpy ogre. Layers. Onions have layers. Ogres have layers. Onions have layers? You get it. We both have layers. Surprisingly, the former SNL actor was not only not the first one cast in the role, but he also wasn't even the first SNL actor cast as Shrek. Chris Farley was cast as Shrek first, and he had even recorded almost all of his lines for the film. 
Tragically, Farley passed away during the recording process. Rather than try to complete the film with Farley's lines, the filmmakers elected to recast him. Shrek is a, is a big, green, disgusting, <sighs> oafish character, which is why I'm sure they cast me. Myers did a fantastic job taking over the role. It's hideous. Oh, that's not very nice. It's just a donkey. Before we get to our top pick, here are a few other last-minute movie changes that deserve an honorable mention. Hugh Jackman, X-Men. The definitive Wolverine was cast three weeks into filming after the first choice was injured. John meets Hans, Die Hard. At first, McClane wasn't supposed to meet Gruber until their final confrontation. I'm John McClane. You're, uh... Clay. Bill, Clay. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Vader's Rampage Rogue One, A Star Wars Story one of the most iconic scenes in this rebellious Star Wars anthology movie occurs near the end. Darth Vader, in a scene straight out of a horror film, mows through rebel soldiers as they desperately try to get the Death Star plans off their ship. It's an amazing scene that showcases Vader's power and intimidation in a more visceral manner than any we've seen yet. But it was actually not part of the initial shooting for Rogue One. The hallway scene was added during reshoots. We were cutting the film together and my editor, Jabez Olsen, he said, I think you need to see one last moment with Darth Vader. Like, I think he needs to have like uh, a badass moment. And we all felt the same way. Its addition certainly ensured the filmmakers didn't choke on their aspirations. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.